When you say the name Incubus, most people are going to associate it with the late 90s, early 2000s rock alternative band Incubus. Now, don't, no disrespect to them, they were phenomenal in their own right. I was a huge fan back in the day, and they've sold 23 million records worldwide, so they've had massive success. But a lot of people, including even those that claim to listen to metal, would be shocked to know that there's an album called Incubus, Serpent Temptation, by the late 1980s death thrash band Incubus. This is a fantastic record. Now, if you've heard of it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've never heard of this record, highly recommend you picking it up. It is phenomenal. It's only eight songs. Now, there's something magical about eight songs. Master of Puppets has eight songs. Leprosy by Death has eight songs. I don't know what it is, but eight songs seem to be something magical. If I had a band myself, I would release eight songs. It's clean. There's really no intro that counts as one. There's no outro that counts as two. It's just eight. It's beautiful. Now, a few things that make this record unique are the fact that it's an extremely rough and raw and gritty record. Some people, some reviews that I've read online, even claim that it is the fastest and heaviest thrash uh, album of, of the 1980s. Faster and heavier than Slayer, Dark Angel, bands like that. So that's up to you. Have a listen, and you can be the judge of that. But nonetheless, this is a very brutal record. And I think some of the things that make it unique to me are the fact that it is extremely brutal. It does have that very raw feeling. Like the minute you hear it, it is just extremely raw. And it is, for extreme metal fans, I think it's what you would want. It's just right on the edge of it's almost bad production, but it's not. The instruments are clear, you can hear it, but it's just not overproduced and very polished. It's got that gritty, raw feeling, which is exactly what I like. Now, some surprises for this are the amount of catchy riffs that they have. There are numerous, numerous catchy riffs in this album. And basically, each song seems like there are extremely catchy parts mixed with just bludgeoned, a wall of noise where it's almost indiscernible. You cannot hear what's going on. And then it goes back into a catchy, chugging, slower riff. So it's a really good balance. I think they pulled that off great. Again, you have moments that are just absolutely blisteringly fast. All the instruments are going together at one to form just a massive sound where you almost can't discern anything. But again, that's metal a lot of times. And then things slow down and we have catchier riffs and we have moments where the riffs are going where there's no singing, where they actually let it play out. And again, these are very, very catchy riffs. If you listen to the first song, Battle of Armageddon, you'll know exactly what I mean, which is the intro itself takes about two minutes to kick in, and it's just this beautiful chugging one riff after the next before it finally gets into the song. So right there and then, you know you're in for something special. This album has what I would call that first 10 or 20 second factor, which is you know immediately that this is an album that you're going to like or not like. I heard this album a long time ago, over a decade ago, and I knew instantly that it was something that I would enjoy listening to. Now, I first heard about this album back in the day, about 2005, 2006, kind of when I was just beginning my extreme metal journey, and I was shocked. I remember texting my sister. I was shocked to find out that there was a band called Incubus, same as the rock alternative band that we love from the early 2000s. Now, eventually Incubus changed their name to Opribrium. So if you know your metal history, you probably know that. They released an album in 1990 called Beyond the Unknown. I'm definitely looking forward to reviewing that album. That album also has a big rager of an opening for the first song. Again, another track where it just hooks you immediately. And if you're an extreme metal fan, you're hooked immediately. But nonetheless, Incubus... Serpent Temptation. I'm curious to hear in the comments section down below, have you heard of this album? What are your thoughts on it? Do you like it? For me, I love it. This album came out in 1988, and it's just in that golden era of thrash. But also an important note is that they pull off what's called death thrash, meaning it borders that edge of it's almost hard enough to where you could consider it death metal, but it's still kind of thrash, so it's right on that border of kind of Sepultura, bands like that, almost Dark Angel, where they're extremely aggressive. And again, it almost borders on uh, death metal. Now the singing is kind of a barked 
singing and a growl. It's not Cookie Monster vocals, it's not like that, but it's kind of a bark and a growl. I really like it. I think the singing is harsh and it really lends itself to the harshness of the music. So, nonetheless, really curious to hear your comments in the comments section down below. Have you heard of this? What are your thoughts on it if you have? This is a gem. Incubus Serpent Temptation 1988. Highly recommend you check it out. See you on the next video. Take care.